Right, so the first thing that we are going to do is create a geometry network. Let's call it sim and I'll change the color. Uh, I'll create a circle and I'll change the plane to ZX and turn the divisions to 50. Uh, let me rotate it to 180 degrees so that the normals are correct here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'll increase the uniform size to 2.5. Uh, let's remesh this by using a remesh node and I'll change the target size to 0 0.02 and yeah we have a lot of points here now as you can see a lot of triangles good for simulation next thing I'm going to do is I'll copy this circle node and uh, all I'll do is I'll change the rotation back to 0 I don't need that and I'll use a poly extrude node so this poly extrude node with the help of that we will extrude this circle and uh, I'll extrude it to one and I'll just turn this output faces because we only want this the circle like this I increase the divisions as well to three and now next I'm going to do is I'll change the transformation for this because if I template this here you can see that this this circle is setting here and we do not want that I will just decrease the uniform size here and I'll move it up a bit like this yeah 0.5 yeah this is looking nice so now I'll do I'll use a copy and transform node so to make a lot of copies I'll need at least four more copies here so one two three four and I'll also decrease the size here to 0 0.66 yeah okay that's looking nice and uh, let me just set it properly align it properly and uh, I'll use a boolean node a boolean fraction one and now you can see we have fractured our circle here and if you come in the bottom you can see that we have some faces here and that is because we need to change the change it to surface both of these are surfaces they are not geometry so that's why we have to change that um, create geometry as surface and now we have our proper fracture here okay next thing i'm going to do is i'll use a attribute triangle to use this attribute triangle to create a attribute which will be going through from the middle of this circle uh, to outwards okay so it will become it will be moving from inwards to outwards and as you can see in our preview our our geometry starts inflating from the middle it starts from the middle section and then it starts coming outwards and that's what we want and for that we'll be using we'll be creating an attribute with the help of the distance function so let's do that I'll create a float called dist and it is going to be equal to our distance function and we need to find distance for all the points so their position from the center which is going to be 0 0 0 so distance bet distance between the centers and the position of the points here let me create a distant dist attribute which is going to be equal to dist variable uh, so that we can see the values here the closest value is 0 point something and the farthest value is 2.5 okay so let me fit that with the help of a fit function so dist is equal to fit and what is this fit this fit takes the value in one range and shifts it to the corresponding value in new range okay so we need to fit the dist variable here and the range here that we are working is 0 and 2.5 so 0 is the closest value and 2.5 is the farthest value and we need to fit that into 1 and 0 so the points are going to have a value from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 okay so the center most points the points in the center if we can visualize this as you can see 
the gradient is running from white to black which means the points at the center have a value of 1 and the farthest points have a value of 0 so it is running from 1 to 0 okay the white represents 1 and the black represents 0 let me add a offset here so dist plus equals is equal to chf offset and let me turn this on by clicking this pair input parameter and now we have an offset if i increase this to 1 you can see the value here is increasing initially it is running from 1 to 0 and then when we increase the offset everything is positive now okay we do not have any negative value or zero value let me change the offset range from 0 to 1 to minus 1 to 1 and now when we change the offset to 0 you can see this is our original if i increase the offset it is going to be that and if i change the offset to minus 1 everything is going to be black everything is everything has a negative value okay so we are running this distance this dist attribute from negative values to positive values and let me just clamp that okay so dist is equal to clamp function we need to clamp the dist variable and we will be clamping it from 0 to 1 okay so the minimum values are going to be 0 and the maximum value will not go over 1 okay if i turn this off let's see the geometry spreadsheet the distance if the offset is 1 is above 1 okay so everything is positive if the offset is minus 1 then the dist value is negative and if it is 0 then it is going from 0 to 1 we want this to go from 0 to 1 only we so we will be clamping and that's why we have used the clamp function so now even if we go to minus 1 then and 1 then the values will remain from 0 to 1 they will not go below or above that okay so let me set the animation here so the at frame 1 the offset is going to be minus 1 and let me increase the frames here to 50 and around to 45 i'll change the offset to 1 and this is our animated offset here which is changing our dist attribute okay so initially everything is going to be black everything is going to be zero and then suddenly it will increase and uh, everything will be one then okay i change the frame range to 150 again and now we will be creating a attribute remap node to remap this dist here okay so as you can see that this attribute is looking good but we need to make it a little sharp so what i'm going to do is change the position point values here and we'll make it a bit sharp here by making this contrasty ramp here okay so adjust this ramp values and make it a little bit contrasty and it's looking nice now i'll use a for each connected piece now because we have different islands here different pieces here and uh, what we need to do is we need to attribute promote the dist attribute here and i want to promote the dist attribute to detail and i want to use the preparation method to maximum okay and i'll use another let me just check this yeah I'll use another attribute promote and this time we'll bring back the dist attribute from detail to point again and let me check let me just yeah this is looking nice but let's just turn this on and now see as you can see all the islands are changing their dist values from black to white one by one okay and that's what we wanted so they are going to inflate one by one and to inflate that these islands we need to create some extrude here so we'll be using a poly extrude and i'll change the distance to 0.1 okay and i'll turn on the back output back so 
we have a good geometry and i'll turn on the groups as well let's change the division to three or two and now we have a proper geometry okay along with uh, proper groups so we have a group for the front we have a group for the side geometry that we have generated it and the back geometry now what i'm going to do is i'll be using attribute promote node and the class attribute that we generated with the connectivity node we will promote it to point here okay that was primitive and we have promoted that to point with the help of attribute promote node and now i am going to create a group promote for all the groups that we generated in our poly extrude so we have extrude back extrude front and extrude side let them promote to point they are primitive group and we'll be promoting them to point groups okay so that is done now let's create our vellum constraints okay so let me create a vellum balloon configuration and vellum balloon configuration gives us two vellum constraints the cloth constraint and the pressure constraint so let's play with that now so let me just connect our vellum solver with our constraints and then we'll go through our constraints now okay so come to well i'm cloth constant and we'll change the group type to points so when we generate vellum balloon configuration we get two vellum cloth uh, two constants one is cloth constant and the other is pressure constant the cloth constant gives our geometry two important properties of cloth which is the stretchability of the cloth and the bendability of the cloth and the pressure constant maintains and uh, generates the pressure inside our geometry okay so we'll go through this and set the constant values but before that i'll just set the pin points here and in the pin points we'll set two groups here the extrude side and extrude back to our stretch section and uh, i'll change the stretchability values here those stretch stiffness needs to be 1e plus 7 we want the cloth to be quite stretchy and i'll change the rest length scale because i want to increase the distance between our points when the simulation starts okay we'll come to pressure constraint here i'll change the group type to points here as well and then come to stretchability the stretch section here and i'll change the stiffness to 1e plus 10 the 1e plus 10 the stretch stiffness maintains the pressure inside our object and the rest length scale increases or decreases the amount of pressure so i'll keep the rest length scale to 5 and i have covered both the cloth constraint and the pressure constraint in detail in the previous uh, tutorials so if you have any doubt then you can go through them uh, now let's run our vellum solver and uh, let's run our flipbook and see what we are getting okay so after running the flipbook for a few seconds you can see that our simulation is working fine uh our pinned groups are not taking participation they are pinned and rest of the geometry is inflating like a balloon what i want now is i want this inflation to start happening from the middle here okay i want this middle island to start inflating like this and then we want this